the first A14 processor benchmarks have leaked through Geekbench, and it's pretty stunning. This is Living on iPad with David Eden Sangwell. Okay, quick video. It is the weekend. I don't normally do stuff at the weekend specifically, but, you know, stuff comes out and sometimes you have to report it. So the first A14 processor benchmarks have leaked through Geekbench and it's pretty stunning. It's pretty cool. This is the one that's obviously coming in the iPad Air 4 and this will also be in the iPhone 12 series and it's pretty awesome. Single core is 1583 with a multi-core score of 4198. That's pretty good. So comparing that to the iPad Pro that we've currently got, the 2020 version, which is running the A14Z processor, 1583 versus 1117 for their single core score, and 4198, so basically 4200 versus 4635. The A14 is a six core chip. The A 12x and a12z is an eight core chip so you would expect it to be a little bit higher there's not a great deal of difference either by the way between the a, uh, a12x and the a12z in terms of these compute performance numbers because uh, basically the add-on was an extra graphics core being enabled so in terms of the actual performance it's pretty pretty well on a par with the ipad pros that we've got now on multi-core and blows it away on a uh, single core score. So that's pretty impressive. Now it gets more interesting when you look at the difference that it makes when you take the A14 core and turn it into an A14X, uh, because we're gonna be looking at, with the A12 chips, the difference between the A12 and the A12Z is 64% increase in performance. So when we scale it up, that means we're looking at 6884 on the multi-core for the A14X. So when we compare those scores to existing Intel and AMD chips, we are looking in the same ballpark, high 6000s. We're looking at Intel's i7 5960X or an i5 10600KF or an 8-core Ryzen 7 4800HS. And presumably, some of those numbers and model numbers and things mean something to some of you guys that are more into kind of desktop computing and building your own stuff. That, I think, I think that's pretty impressive. These are like six and eight core processors that are running around about three gigahertz. Um, but I tell you what, they are gonna be producing a lot more heat than that A14. And the A14 is gonna be running completely fanless. It'll be drawing less power, so once that kind of technology because we don't know it, essentially it's going to be the same a14 cores that go into probably the first apple silicon max the difference might be the other stuff that goes around it kind of the a series processors have the uh, image signal processor the neural engine the this and that and that and that the touch layer support and this all of the stuff that's built around the cores that make it into an a series system on a chip there will be different things that are put around to make it into a Mac system on a chip. Just like the A, I think it's the A11 or the A12 that gets converted into the T2 chip. They take off the bits that they don't need and they put in the stuff that they do need. I think that's gonna be the main difference. I think performance wise in terms of the cores and core count, we might be seeing even more cores into the A14X or the A14Z or whatever the Mac version of it is. But uh, and they might even add a little bit more voltage so that it overclocks essentially compared to an A series chip. But it's still going to be very, very low uh, heat, very low TDP and very low energy consumption in comparison to these Intel and AMD processors. I think it's going to be pretty impressive. The one thing we haven't seen yet on the A14s is there's been no metal score. So we don't know how it's going to compare graphically. Um, but bear in mind as well that the A14 in an iPad Air versus an iPad Pro that exists right now, performance in the real world is probably going to look nicer. And the reason I say that is because the A14 in the iPad Air isn't trying to drive a ProMotion display, it's not trying to drive twice as many frames to that screen each time, it's going to actually leave more headroom for the processor itself to do stuff that's useful to you. Uh, for me personally, unless you've been on 120 hertz and then come back down to 160, I don't think most people in the real world will notice it. I've never sat there with my iPhone uh, XS and thought to myself, well, this is a bit jerky, isn't it? It's only refreshing 60 times a second. That's, uh, you know, when a movie is 24, I think we can probably deal with 60. I understand people that want to do gaming, especially competitive gaming, the extra frame rate can be uh, a big help. 
Apple is making a big push into Apple Arcade this year. It looks like there's going to be uh, games to rival the Zelda games. Uh, Breath of the Wild, I think it is. Again, I'm not a massive gamer, but I know that those things are important. I know that in competitive, like, first-person shooting games, um, the frame rate is super important. Linus Tech Tips did an awesome video with the slow-mo guys checking out uh, what difference it actually makes having the higher frame rates on a display and on a graphics card. So check that out. I will put a link to it up here somewhere. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be pretty impressive. And once they even put the A14 into an iPhone, it's going to perform even better because it's pushing less pixels than it will be on an iPad Air. So let me know in the comments, guys, how excited you are for A14 and for the A14 generation of Apple Silicon that is going to be arriving in Macs by the end of the year. Come on, you guys. Come on. Get that Apple Silicon out. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and I will give you a shout out in the next video if you let me know you've done all three things. Thanks. Thanks.